This lab is quite cool because there's a reflected cross-site scripting vulnerability for the user agent request header within a blog post. But because the reflected cross-site scripting vulnerability exists within a request header, it's actually not trivial to exploit it. We can't just send a phishing link to our victim to perform our cross-site scripting attack. But there's also a HTTP request smuggling vulnerability. And by combining these two, we're able to deliver the cross-site scripting exploit to our victim without requiring any interaction on their part. So let's have a look. We're on the home plates of the application here. And the first thing we want to do is confirm that reflect the cross-site scripting vulnerability. So I'm going to go to the first blog post just to have that loaded in and then switch to burp and go to proxy, HTTP history. And we want the get request for post ID seven here. So I'm going to send that to repeater and switch to repeater. And we can see if we send this request, we can see our user agent request header has the string Mozilla in it. So I'm going to copy that and then search for it in the response. And we can see that it's reflected in the response. So in the request itself here on the left, I'm going to replace the user agent that we had here with foobar and send it again. Now, if I search for foobar in the response, we can see again that it's reflected here. So now let's think if we want to exploit this, we need to uh, exit the input parameter here. So I'm going to go to the left and after foobar, exit the input tag. And then I'm going to follow that up with a script tag and call the, let's say the print function instead of the alert function, and then close the script tag and send this request. And if I search for foobar again in the response, we can see that we've nicely exited the input parameter here. And then we have our uh, script tags together with our print function. So let's go to the left again to the request and let's request this in the browser just to see, to confirm that it works. In the original session, let's copy this link, go to the browser and paste the link, and visit it. And yeah, we get a print pop-up. So that confirms to us that the cross-site scripting or reflected cross-site scripting vulnerability exists within the application. Now we just have to figure out how to combine that with a request smuggling vulnerability to send the exploit to our victim without requiring any interaction on their part. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to go back to the home page and then switch to burp to start our request smuggling. So I'm going to go to proxy and get the get slash request here for the root and send it to repeater and switch to repeater. And the first thing I want to do is go to the right side under the inspector window and downgrade the HTTP protocol to HTTP 1.1 and go back to the left. And I'm going to switch the request method over to post because we'll have uh, data in the request body. I'm also going to delete any unnecessary headers. So anything above content type and underneath the host header. Next thing I want to do is I want to turn off update content length automatically because we want to control that ourselves because first we'll confirm what kind of vulnerability we're dealing with through a timing technique and update content length automatically has to be turned off for us to do that. So let's turn it off. And then the next thing, uh, last thing I do is I show non-printable characters. It's just handy to have those on for request smuggling in general because with these new lines or carriage return line feeds, it's easy to have a missing one or an extra one and it's handy to count the content length as well. So now we're ready for our timing technique. And I'm going to start by adding a transfer encoding chunk header here, followed by a new line to separate the request headers from the request body. Then I'm going to send a chunk of size three, ABC, followed by the invalid chunk size X, followed by a new line. And I'm going to modify the content length to be six. And when we send this request, if we get a timeout, that is a very strong indication that this endpoint is vulnerable to a CLTE attack. You can already see the response has taken a long time to get back. And eventually, we'll see a timeout as we do here. So that's a very strong indication that this endpoint is vulnerable to a CLTE attack. So let's confirm that. And let's use a differential response to do that. So I'm going to delete what we had in our request body here before and replace it with a terminating chunk because we want to indicate to the backend server that our request has ended here. And then we want to poison it with a get request for something that doesn't exist using HTTP protocol 1.1 followed by a new line. We also want to set a content type and a content length because we'll have data in our smuggled request body. And I'm going to set the request body parameter X for a value of none. And then for the content length, six is actually fine, but the minimum we should set it to is three because we have two bytes here in our smuggled request body. And we want to make sure that at least one byte of the follow-up request or normal request gets appended to it. And then the last thing we want to do is the content length here. We don't want to constantly fiddle with that because it's a CLTE lab. We just want the front end to forward the entire body that we set here onto the backend server. So the easiest way to achieve that is to set updates content length or activate update content length automatically again. And then we're ready. So let's send this request and switch to the browser and refresh. 
and we get a 404 not found. So that confirms the CLTE vulnerability. So now let's exploit that vulnerability. I'm gonna go back to burp. And then instead of the get request for something that doesn't exist here, we wanna do a get request for post ID seven here or any of the posts really, but let's just copy the one that we used before. And then I'm gonna paste that over here and then go back to that tab. And we also wanna copy the user agent field that we had set here. So I'm gonna copy this because that contains our cross-site scripting exploit. And I'm just gonna add that after the content length um, request body parameter here. And then I'm gonna send that request and then switch here and refresh the page and we get the print pop-up. So that confirms that our uh, request smuggling vulnerability uh, combined with our reflected cross-site scripting vulnerability is working. So I'm gonna cancel this and then go back to burp. And instead of the print function, let's call the alert function and send it and then switch back to the lab. And you can see we've already solved it. So that means the lab user was browsing the site. We sent our attack request. The lab user did a get request and that was appended to our attack request that contained our smuggled request body that contained the uh, reflected cross-site scripting vulnerability. And the lab user was presented with the alert pop-up and that solved the lab. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for watching.